Hi everyone, my name is Stacey and welcome to Quilt Club with Stacey Lee. This is week two. Hopefully you've already watched my first video where I show you how we lay out our fabric. And as you can see, I've got my pile here ready to sew. You might have chosen to sew yours slightly different than I'm gonna do and that's okay. Just do what works best for you and let's get sewing. So just a couple of things before we get started. I do recommend starting with a nice fresh sewing machine needle. I do also recommend you wind a couple of bobbins. There's nothing worse than having to stop your sewing to wind bobbins. Make sure you've got your quarter inch foot on and if you're not sure how to do that, you can watch this quick video. Also, you might wanna put your masking tape down to help you with your quarter inch and there's also my video that will help you with that. Set your stitch length to length two. This makes it a nice compact stitch which will help your quilt last longer. And before you start sewing on your quilt, please make sure that you just do a quick test run with a bit of scrap fabric. We just wanna check that you're happy that your sewing machine is stitching nicely. Okay, everybody, so I've just turned my machine on. Obviously, everyone has a different machine but I can only show you what I've got to work with. Um, some of the things that I have to take note of is that every time I do turn my machine on, it takes my stitch back to number one. And number one has my needle to the left. If I sew now, it will hit my foot. So I always have to change my machine to stitch two so that my needle will sit in the center. Okay, and I'm just going to change my stitch length to two so it's nice and compact. I've got my quarter inch foot in, I've got my masking tape down, and now I'm going to begin to sew. So I'm going to grab my little pile that you saw me make earlier and I it doesn't matter where I sew it now because I know they're all pinned together how I want to sew them so I'm, I've taken column one but it doesn't matter what column you sew and I'm going to grab two pieces that I've pinned together to sew so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that pin out and I'm always going to put it back on my magnetic pin caddy so we're lining up our squares at the beginning at the end and the edges so we want to make that lined up perfectly as best we can. And one thing you can do is you can pin it and then check from behind that it also is perfectly lined up on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin here. Notice I'm putting my pins in on this side because when I'm sewing they're going to be easier to pull out. I'm going to come down to the end. I'm going to check that's all still lined up and I'm going to pin there also. And if I want to, I could put another two in or another one in, just whatever I'm comfortable with. Some very experienced quilters don't even put pins in. But there we go. I'm just going to check that my corners meet up perfectly at the beginning and at the end of my square. And I'm going to check that it all lines up nicely on the back and that looks great. You can also slightly adjust it as you're sewing. So now that I'm happy, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to start a little bit back here. If you've got your masking tape on, you can start back here. Lining it up with the foot. I'll put my foot down and then I will begin to sew. But actually what I'm going to do is lift my foot up and I'm going to make sure that this thread is actually starting behind. We always want our thread behind. If we don't, we're going to end up with a bird's nest. So I'm going to put my foot down and I am going to sew slowly. If, if you're a beginner, I really recommend if you've got a speed control, turning it down to two or even one if you've got a heavy foot. One more thing to note is we don't need to go backwards and forwards. We're just going to go forwards. And as I come up to my pins, I'm just going to carefully pull them out and I'm not going to put them randomly anywhere. I'm going to put them straight back on my magnetic pin caddy. As I'm coming up to this pin, I'm just going to pull it out. Pull that one out looks like it's a little bit crooked here so I'm just going to fix it up with my fingers and I'm going to sew off the edge lift my foot up and then I'm going to cut the thread I know I could use my cutter but I don't like to waste that much thread so I'm just going to cut it with my little scissors we just make sure that thread goes back to the back there. So now I've done my first row and that looks really good. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew every single piece together. I'm happy with that one, so now I'll move on to the next one. And I will do exactly the same thing. I'll take this loose pin out, I'll pop it on my pin caddy, I'll line up this corner, the edges, right to the bottom, and when I feel like I've lined it up perfectly, I'll put my pins in. Okay, pins are in, and now I can just check it, and that looks really good. So now I will sew this next one, and I will continue on until I've sewn every single square together. Okay, so I finished my first column. I just wanted to quickly mention the quarter inch seam. You can go to my other video to find out how you can try and work out if you are sewing a perfect quarter inch seam. But I also don't want you to feel so paralyzed by getting that correct that you feel too scared to sew and you're never gonna finish your quilt. It's important that you just do your best. At the end of the day, there's no quilting police coming to measure your seams. So long as they're all sewn relatively evenly, we're doing such a simple quilt, it's going to be fine. Okay, so remembering there are no quilting police, I would like you to please sew every single square together that we pinned or if you've chosen to stack that you've stacked. And then we're going to iron and then we're going to sew all our columns together. Okay, so now I've sewn all my columns together. Now I just need to do a bit of ironing or pressing. And I've got my ironing mat. I've got my iron all ready to go. I'm using steam today. You might want to use starch or you might want to use a spray water bottle. Do whatever you prefer. And what we're going to do is we're going to be nesting our seams when we sew the columns together. So in order to nest our seams nicely, we need to make sure all the seams are ironed down in one direction on one column and ironed in another direction on the other column. And you'll notice on my little cards here, there's an arrow. So that's to help you know on column one, let's iron all our seams down. And then when we get to column two, we're going to iron all our seams up. And then when we sew them together, they will nest perfectly. And that's going to make more sense when we get to the next step, sewing them together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take column one and we're going to set all our seams on column one. So I'm just going to turn it over and I'm just going to take that seam, and grab my iron and I'm just going to press it down. Lift it up and press it down. So I'm setting that seam, which helps keep our stitches nice and strong. I'll open that one up and I'll find the next seam. And I'm just going to set that one. Pressing. For a few moments, coming up, pressing. Coming up. And I'll do that all the way along. So now I've pressed all my seams, I'm just going to find the top again and I'm just checking we want to iron those seams down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our first bit we've sewn together and I can already feel that this seam is wanting to go up but I want it to go down. So I'm just going to carefully push it in the right direction so now the seam is facing towards me rather than up. So now what I'm doing is I'm, fin I'm just finger pressing it open so that when we iron it, it reduces the chances of having little creases in here. So once I feel like that's nicely opened up, nice and flat, I can give that a press and not an iron. <laughs> Remember guys? So we're pressing. 
and we're pressing. And that's our first one. Remembering we're following the guide on the top here, we're coming down. So I'll move that up and I'll find the next seam. And this one wants to is already coming towards me. I'm checking that it's nice and flat. I don't want any creases in here. And I'm checking that that seam is coming towards me. I'm happy it's coming towards me. I'm happy that I've pressed out any potential creases in there and now I'll give it a press. And when we check them, you'll see the seams are coming down. So we want all our seams on this column coming down towards us. When we've finished our column one, we'll move on to our column two. And this one, we want our seams to all go up. But remember, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set every seam first. So make sure that's nice and flat. We give that a press. We give that a press. And then we move on to our next seam. Okay, so we've finished pressing all our seams in this column. I'm just going to start back up at the top and check which way I'm going. So this time I'm going forwards. So I'll lay it down on my mat and I'll feel that seam and I'll make sure that it's facing forwards and you can just flip it over and check. Remember you can feel if it's sitting nice and flat. We don't want half of it going forward and half of it coming back. We want it all going forward. Just give it a finger press. We don't want any creases in here. And then we press. continue on and we do this for every single column okay so I've just got two columns here I've got column one and column two and now we're going to pin them together to sew and we're going to nest them I've got my pins handy I'm going to open out column one so we're starting at the top and I'm going to open out column two because I want to sew the top of column one to the top of column two and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to fold them in towards each other. So can you see what I've done? I've got column one here and column two here and the good sides are facing each other and we're going to sew them together. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that our seams here are nested so that when they're sewn together and we open them up, they meet perfectly in the middle here. So we do that by lining up the edges. So I've got, this is column one and this is column two. I'm lining up the edges and I'm finding the seams. And on this side, there's the ridge where it's been folded and ironed. And on this side, there's the ridge where it's been folded and ironed. And if I push them together, they kind of lock into place and you can feel that. We don't want there to be movement. We want to push the seams so they lock into place and there's nowhere for them to go. And that's called nesting the seams. Push and feel that they can't go any further against each other and you can just open it up and just have a little look to see how you think that will sew. And if I sew mine now, I think they're going to turn out perfectly. So what I'll do is I'll just grab some pins and I like to put one on either side. Remembering that I've locked my 
seams, but I've also made sure they're nice and even, these edges. So I've done the first one there, and now I'm gonna find the second one. And I'm finding this edge where it's been folded over on this side and this side, and I'm pushing them together so they lock in. I'm lining up these edges also so it's nice and tidy. And what I can do is I can just lift it up and just check that I think when they're sewn together they'll look perfect and they, to me they do look like they'll be perfect. So again I'll pin that on either side. And then I'll find the next seam. Now what I do like to do is I, especially if you're a beginner, I'd pin at the very beginning, just so you know you're starting off nice and straight. And it doesn't hurt to do an extra pin in the middle of the square. And once we've finished pinning, we can begin sewing. And again, we're sewing at our quarter inch seam. Okay, let's sew that together. Okay, so now we're all ready to sew. I did turn my sewing machine off. So you'll notice if I turn my hand wheel, my needle's gonna zip back to the left. So I need to turn it back to two. So the needles in the middle are not gonna hit my foot and I'm just gonna change the stitch length back to two. And we're just going to do all the usual stuff, lining it up with our quarter inch foot. And this time we don't need to stop and start, we're just doing one big long stitch. I'm just going to turn mine down again. And then when I come up to the pins, I'm just going to pull them out. these pins I'm going to pull them out as I need to So now I've sewn columns one and two together. If I come in and check my seams there, I can see that they're meeting perfectly in the middle and I'm really, really happy with that. What I would like you to do is I would like you to sew every column on, so from one to seven, and then we're gonna press and then we've finished our quilt top. Okay, so I've sewn all my columns together and I know that I've done them in the right order because I've got my numbering, one, two, three, four, and so on, and it's looking great. You could just snip off some of these little loose threads that have come through if you've got things like this happening. Now what we need to do is set our seams and iron them. So I'm just gonna flip it over to the back and we just wanna set those seams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold them back on every fold that I've sewn and I'm just going to set those seams like we did before when it was just the two pieces but now it's a whole column so we'll just set that and we'll just go along and we'll set the seams 
just I find it easier just to set all the seams in one go at this stage and then we'll come back and we'll fold our seams over. Okay, so I've set all my seams and now I'm just going to flip it around and we're going to do the same thing we did, but it's just super long now because we're going to do the whole column. Okay, so we just have to set the seams for the columns that we've just sewn together and we're going to do it the same way. I'm going to set all mine to the left because that makes the most sense for me. Technically, you're meant to iron towards the dark, but I don't have a whole row of black and a whole row of white. Sometimes you just have to do what makes the most sense, so I'm going to iron mine all to the left. So I've set my seams, now I'm just going to finger press, make sure I don't have any creases in here, and then I'm going to give it a press. And then I'll move, move along as I need to. Finger press, making sure there's no creases in here, making sure my seam is facing to the left. And a press, and a press. And then I'll just carry on to the next seam on the, this column. Again, I want mine all facing towards the left. So I'll just carry on until I've done all the seams where I sewed my columns together. And then we've finished our quilt top. Okay, everyone, this is a really big week. I think this is definitely the biggest week for the course, but I know you can all do it. So I would like you to arrange your squares out to a point where you're happy with them. I'd like you to decide how you're going to know how you're going to sew them together correctly, either by using the PDF that I've provided. Remembering if you can't print, just write them out like they are in the PDF and cut them up. That'll be fine as well. Or you might want to stack yours. Whatever you choose to do, that's fine. Then I want you to sew them together and I've given you all the tips to sewing them together. Then we're setting our seams, finger pressing and then pressing our seams. I just want you to follow the instructions, take your time. You might need to do this over a few hours over the week because it really is a big week, but I know you can do it and I can't wait to see all the finished quilt tops on my Facebook group. Good luck everyone and next week we're going to be basting our quilt. And that means we're going to sandwich it together. We're going to take the quilt top, the batting and the backing and we're going to sandwich them together. And I'm going to teach you how to do that and then they'll be ready for quilting. So good luck everyone and I just can't wait to see how you all go. Thank you.